welcome back to Maths with Mrs J. Today I want to teach you how to graph, or how to sketch at least, rational functions. A rational function is basically like a fraction, but where you have a function in the numerator and the denominator. Now I've got an example here that I'm going to go through with you in detail. Um, before I actually go through that, I want to show you the process that you go through. So let's just go back a slide and I'll show you the steps that you go through. It's very similar to sketching any sort of graph where you're finding stationary points, x and y intercepts, etc. However, in the case of a rational function, you quite likely will have some asymptotes to deal with. An asymptote is a line that the function approaches but doesn't actually touch, with very few exceptions. Very, very occasionally, you might actually have a situation where you have a horizontal or oblique asymptote and the function might actually cross it and then approach it from the other side. That's very, very rare, but just bear that in mind. Certainly, if you have a vertical asymptote, the graph will never cross that, okay? Because a vertical asymptote occurs where the function is simply not defined. So just going through our steps, they're very common steps that we use for curve sketching. Obviously finding X and Y intercepts is important and very helpful. We do need to find any potential asymptotes and think about what's happening as we approach from above and below. We also need to consider the um, function, what's happening to the function as X is tending towards infinity and negative infinity. We use our calculus to find any stationary points and we determine the nature of those stationary points and also find any points of inflection. And then of course, we can use those important um, bits of information to draw a sketch. Let's actually go through this example and I'll take you through all the steps one by one. Before we actually start going through and finding all these things, I do find it helpful to have this function in various different formats depending on what I'm going to do. For example, in order to find the x-intercepts, I'm going to need to know when the numerator is zero because that's the only time that this function will be zero. And in order to do that, having it factorised would be a good idea. So I'm going to do that as one version of my function. As another version of my function, I'm actually going to do a polynomial division and I'm going to do our x squared minus 5x plus 6 divided by that and see what function we get and what we have left over. That will help as well in terms of, of working out any potential um, oblique asymptotes and also it will help us when we're differentiating because it will be an easier function to differentiate. So let's just do that. We're just going to fiddle with this a little bit. If we have it in our several forms all ready to go, then actually going through the process should be fairly easy. All right. So first step, let's just um, factorise the numerator of this. This is a nice easy one to factorise. We just get x minus 2, x minus 3 all over our x minus 4. Now, what we're going to do also is we're going to do a polynomial division. So we have our x squared, I'll do it up here, x squared minus 5x plus 6 divided by x minus 4. So we're going to divide leading term by leading term. And we're going to uh, get x here, then we're going to multiply through, so x squared minus 4x, do our subtraction, negative 5x minus negative 4x is negative x, bring down our 6, and we're going to again do our leading term divided by leading term, we get minus 1, multiply through again, so we get minus x plus 4, and then when we do our subtraction we get 2. So by doing that division, we have found that another version of our function is that f of x is x minus 1 plus 2 over our x minus 4. We could even give that in yet another version that will sort of 
wrap it up with a bow all ready for our differentiation stage. So we could rewrite this like that just to make our differentiation stage a lot easier. Okay, let's go through the process. So our first step obviously is intercepts. I like putting little headings as I go. So obviously your x-intercepts occur when y is zero. Now for a rational function to be zero, the numerator has to be zero. That's why I factorized it. And we said obviously that x is either gonna be two or three. Your y-intercept occurs when x is zero. So it's probably easiest just to substrate into the original version there and we get that y is negative six on four or negative three on two. You can keep that as a negative three on two or change it to negative one and a half. Doesn't really matter. So that's our intercepts. Now we're gonna start thinking about any asymptotes. And yes, it is a funny word to spell, but that is how you spell it. For starters, let's think about any potential vertical asymptotes. If we have a look at this function, we notice that the denominator is x minus four. We know by now that we can't divide something by zero. It even says in the function, x can't be four. That doesn't necessarily mean we have an asymptote at x equals four, but it makes it a potential asymptote. We need another couple of things to happen. So let's just think about those for a minute. If we're coming in, just look at this very original function. If we're coming in from above, so as x is tending towards four from above, so we're just a little bit bigger than four, our numerator is going to be four squared minus 20 times four plus six. So f of x will be tending towards, so you could, or even you could put it in here, you're gonna get two times one, aren't you? So it's gonna be two over a very tiny positive number. All right, that's pretty unmathematical the way I've done that, but it'll just help you understand what's happening. Now, if you're dividing a positive number by an increasingly tiny positive number, right? What's actually gonna happen is, you're gonna get an increasingly big positive number. If X is tending towards four from below, then F of X will again be tending towards two in the numerator, but in the denominator, we're gonna have a very tiny, negative number, aren't we? Because we're just a little bit less than four. So if we take four away from it, we'll have a, a negative number. It will be a very, 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 very tiny negative number, but it will be negative nonetheless. And the tinier that gets, the bigger that gets. So f of x will be tending towards negative infinity. So what we're saying is, let me just draw a little picture here to sort of show you what's happening. Here's your axes, here's x is four. We're saying as we're coming in from above, so as our x values are coming in this way, we're heading up towards positive infinity. And as we're coming in from below, so as we're a little bit lower than our, than our four, the function's gonna to tend towards negative infinity and the function is not defined at x equals four. So that tells me, that is sufficient to tell me that yes, I do have a vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote at x equals four. Okay. Let's consider, let me just get rid of that for a minute. Um, otherwise we won't have any room to do any more working. Um, let's consider any potential other asymptotes that we might have. Let's have a look at another version of our formula. Let's have a look at this version of the formula now. What do you notice about that? Well, so that's our 
vertical asymptote. Horizontal, potential or oblique. Oblique just means it's neither horizontal nor vertical. Well, as X is tending towards infinity, this bit here is going to tend towards zero. Isn't it? From above, right? So this will become increasingly tiny. So y, or f of x, will tend towards your x minus 1 line. As x is tending towards negative infinity, this rational expression here will be tending towards 0 from below. So again, y will be tending towards this line here. So in this case, it will be tending from above. In this case, it will be coming in from below. Again, let me just draw a little sketch to show you what's happening. If we have the line y equals x minus 1, if x is 0, y, y is negative 1. If y is 0, x is 1. So we've got this sort of situation here. And what we found is as you're tending towards your positive infinity, this, the function is going to be coming towards this line from above. As you're tending towards x as negative infinity, the line's going to be approaching this but from below. It'll be a little bit underneath it. So again, we could say, and of course that's not a horizontal line, it's an oblique line, so we'd say an oblique asymptote at y equals x minus 1. Okay, we've done the really tricky parts. Let's now move on and do, let's just first of all highlight our um, x-intercepts and the fact that we've got these asymptotes because they're important. Let's do our stationary points in their nature. We're quite lucky here in that this is quite easy to differentiate. So let's move on and do that on our next slide.